I'm uh, one of the beneficiaries of the trainings on the Rangeland Decision Support Tool. Uh, we realized that uh, NRT started in back 2005 and uh, Rangelands was one of our key activities. And uh, uh, we have experienced a big challenge of uh, increase in population, a uh, shift in settlement patterns, and also uh, unpredictable climatic conditions, which has really affected the uh, condition of our uh, rangelands. So we thought it was necessary to uh, come up with uh, some strategy on how to help the community improve the, uh, uh, the rangelands because that is like a uh, very key in their livelihood. Without rangelands, it's really important, and uh, we took it as our core activity and uh, we help them establish uh, grazing committees. We help them also employ grazing coordinators who will help uh, in guiding them and also monitoring the rangelands. So the grazing coordinator together with the grazing committee through the support of Northern Rangeland Trust developed uh, grazing blocks where we are able to have uh, grazing blocks for wet season and grazing blocks for uh, dry season. And uh, then is th some sort of a plan on when to graze during the wet season and uh, during the, the dry season. Uh, to monitor that, uh, there was that discussion between uh, Northern Rangeland Trust and RCMRD uh, to come up with a tool that will help us uh, scientifically monitor the vegetation condition. If these measures that NRC has put in place in terms of rangeland management are working or not, it will help us uh, maybe make a decision as we move forward. Because uh, with some sort of science and uh, the monitoring tool, we're able to see maybe f since last year we have done this and this in terms of rangeland management. And uh, we are going to, we are, this tool will help us uh, see if there's that improvement or we need to adjust and maybe look for other techniques of uh, managing the rangelands. I think it's, uh, we have been having uh, some sort of continuous training, but uh, in the recent few, two, two, two years ago, that's when the tool has really uh, maybe attracted some sort of attention because you know community, you need to take them uh, slowly as they understand, because uh, science sometimes is very difficult, but understand the tool is very simple because of the issues to do with, it's easy to visualize because uh, the use of NDVI, which is based on color, you can easily see the greener, uh, greenness and also the brownness. You can tell them this greener part, the vegetation condition here is good at this period of time. So maybe when you're doing planning for grazing next month, uh, this is where we will graze, and this area where we we are seeing maybe the brownness, probably there is some sort of degradation. We need to do some rehabilitation. Uh, <coughs> another thing that this tool is really helping us is uh, NRT has established uh, sanctuaries, rhino sanctuaries. We have established the roller sanctuaries, and. Uh, there's some sort of red line improvement there because it is a fenced area, uh, protected. So we are able to monitor if the vegetation is improving. And uh, that is really very key because uh, the wildlife which are inside the sanctuaries uh, benefit, rely on that uh, vegetation. So we are really keen to use the tool to monitor the habitat. So another importance of the tool as well is we are doing uh, restoration, uh, land degraded, the degraded area rehabilitation. So we are able to use the tool to monitor if there's some improvement because uh, we clear the uh, acacia deficiency. I didn't mention almost over 50% of our landscape is uh, covered by an invasive species, either acacia deficiency or opuntia. So we are doing some clearing, we recede, and uh, after some period of time, when the grass grow, we allow people to, to graze there. 
So this tool will help us to monitor if there's some sort of improvement in the land cover when you do the receding. We have done almost 5,000 hectares rehabilitation for the last uh, 9 to 10 years. I think the tool is comparing the, the benefits and I mean the challenges. I'll say the benefit supersedes the challenges, but there's room for, for improvement in terms of uh, we, are, we need if the tool can be able to give us data on rainfall because uh, rainfall is a key issue. And uh, for now, we are only relying on the NDVI to tell the vegetation condition. So if you're able to really get real data on, on the rainfall, we're able to link and also to convince and explain to the community this was when the rain, uh, those rains, and this was the, uh, maybe the, the, the amount of rainfall. And uh, we're able also to show them the shift because the people nowadays, the, the rainfall pattern nowadays is not very standard. It keeps, when you're expecting rain, there's no rain. And then when you don't expect, it's rain. So it's good to have that kind of data. Maybe you can compare for the last 10 years how the rainfall was. And it will help us also improve. Linked with the NDVI, we can use it to make more better decisions on rainlands. Yeah. We, are, we are able to really uh, train more people, especially you know the core, the core person in as far as range is concerned is the the local person, the community, and for them to if they own it, uh, I think the tool will really be very useful. So we'll keep training them on really how to how the tool works, and we'll keep developing maps for them, and also we are going to use it in doing uh, grazing. We, are, we normally have a grazing planning of every season and uh, we intend to use these uh, maps from the tool to guide us in setting up uh, annual uh, or, or no seasonal grazing plans so i think that, that that's uh, the strength we are going to try and utilize yeah we are working with uh, i mean in partnership with the uh, county governments nrt is aligned to the 10 counties that we work with. The 10 counties are Baringo, Samburu, West Pokot, Isiolo, uh, Marsabit, uh, Lamu, Tana River, uh, Kipia, uh, Meru. Yeah, so those, those are the 10 counties. We have been involved in uh, four counties in developing of the county integrated development plans, that is Laikipia, Samburu, uh, Marsabit, and Baringo. But uh, uh, maybe mov moving forward, we are going to really try and partner together with the rest. But uh, NRT and other partners were very instrumental when the four counties were developing their CIDPs. At that time, I don't think they, I'm not very, at that time it was under development when we, we were working with them. Okay. Maybe... Invasive species now? They, they, they use because we did some s small basic data collection. Mm -hmm. But uh, remember this uh, invasive species mapper is a tool that we are still using it. So the data, the amount of data that has been collected was not so substantial at that time. but. Maybe in future it will be very, very useful if we keep collecting the data and the landscape covered it will be, it should be big. So that's the only time maybe we'll use it to, to make uh, decisions. Uh, RCMRD and uh, Savir have been really very instrumental and we'll wish if uh, the partnership continues because, uh, I mean, technology takes time and uh, we have been uh, trying to come up with different ideas there's a lot of gap uh, down there in terms of technology and uh, science. So if the, the partnership continues, mm -hmm. we're going to come up with many ideas on how to really improve on the rangelands in the northern Kenya. Remember, over 70% of NRT landscape is degraded. So if many other uh, issues to do with water, and uh, issues to do with the, uh, how to monitor the clearing. 
those some sort of partnership in that if the ideas come up and you get support through you it will be very very instrumental so we would really request if this partnership uh, continues